it's my honor to do this video. I'm blessed to be Gina Hall's sister because I have an amazing story to tell called The Miraculous Journey. So I'm going to share why in the world I would write a book. A book about my sister's murder? No. It's just part of it. The journey really is about so much more. It's about my quest for truth. 2016, this quiescent warrior got woken up. But it wasn't the lead only that woke me up. It was the mystery of what I experienced. An extraordinary experience. One word. Miracles. <laughs> the journey was an experience that I, so I just couldn't keep to myself. That wouldn't be the right thing to do, not to share what I experienced. I wondered, though, how in the world am I going to share these inexplainable events that I experienced? Well, I had a lot of help. <laughs> you know, for decades I was at peace about not having found Gina's body. I fought the parole boards and, you know, but I never focused nonstop on Gina or her body or Everly or anything. I lived my life just as my sister would want me to do. You see, I always knew that her soul was not in those hidden remains. But in 2016, when that lead surfaced again, the hate that I'd always felt escalated. I wanted to know the truth. I wanted to know the facts surrounding all the lies from 1980. what really happened to her on June 29, 1980. But all my life, I truly did hate him. And that hate was hurting my heart. My sister's last words were, listen to your heart, not your head. Face-to-face -face words to me before she left that night. My heart really was full of unforgiveness. But I still, I lived my life. I let it all go and did just as my sister would have wanted me to do. Live life every day, every moment, because the reality is you never know when you're going to draw your last breath. Gina taught me that very young. The dot of your life is what you make out of it. And I always understood eternal life. But I hadn't figured out quite how to put that piece into the dot of my life. You can't ignore it. But they're both important. So how could I keep the message of miracles to myself? A message of the only truth that really matters. So imagine being 57 years old, which I was in 2016, and all of a sudden you wake up and you've written a message and you have no memory of doing it. Quite extraordinary. Hundreds of them. Couldn't figure any of them out as I was living it. I was just going day to day, 
What am I supposed to do with this one? What am I supposed to do with that one? Sometimes I would draw a picture and I couldn't even recreate it. It was so perfect. Like an oval or something simple. But one night I wrote down a message that became what I would say is the message. And it was a message that said, image in the water, same place. And it had a little cross type thing drawn, but I didn't know it was a cross when I woke. I thought, is that a count compass? Is it, what, what is that? What have I drawn? I don't know. Oh well, I'll figure it out later. Because I was quite busy with my life still at that point. So what began as a quest because of the 2016 dismemberment lead that woke up the warrior I began on that quest for truth but it turned into a search for Gina again just like 1980 I wonder do I need to be walking this path again for some reason One month after I had written the image in the water message, which I'm going to add a video later that will show you these pictures so you can visualize what I'm talking about because it's amazing. So what had begun as a quest for truth became a search for her body. And one day in August, I was at a place off of Hazel Hollow Road. We were searching for a slave graveyard. And when I found it, hot day, I glanced down over the hill and I said to myself, my goodness, I've seen this in my dreams. That's it. And I go down there and I see things that I'd drawn. So I was in awe. So I just took a picture, like I did everywhere that summer. All summer long. Picture, picture, picture. Thousands. Documented. So if anybody ever really wants to delve into the inexplainable, extraordinary experience that I was a part of, they could. Well, when I was looking through those photos later, I saw the symbol that I had drawn a month earlier on the image in the water message. Its shape visible on the water. And as I looked closer, I could see that the light image was not from the sunlight. It was Clearly, two separate concentrated balls of energy, defined lines spreading out onto the water and making the shape just like this. And that shape mirrored the symbol that I had drawn one month earlier. Well, at, at the moment, in the moment of that moment, I believed it was a sign to tell me where my sister was hidden. It would be a year later in 2017 on Gina's anniversary death weekend that I would figure it all out. I was in Norway and my husband and I spontaneously decided to hop on a ferry and go to a little coastal town called Dravik. And we walked around and the streets were beautiful and the flowers and it was just a beautiful, perfect day. And we walked by a jewelry store and I paused and I had an urge. And I had learned by then to listen to these urges, to walk in there. And I did. And I asked the, jewelry, uh, the jeweler's wife, I said, do you have any crosses? I'd like a white gold cross. All I have is a gold, yellow gold. 
I've been wanting a white gold cross ever since my amazing experiences that I tell about in the miraculous journey. And she pulls out the only one she has in the entire shop that this jeweler made in 2012 by himself, handmade. And guess what? It matched the symbol I've drawn and the image on the water where the angels laid down to send this message to us. The message is clear. The message is the cross and the image on the water is a little girl's soul at the foot of the cross. The place where Jean met Jesus. That would certainly be something God would want me to know. So that's why we have a book. <laughs> God knew right when Gina drew her last breath that he would take that evil and whoop it. He would take it and he would use it for good. And he has. It's been my joy to share this story. This is Gina Renee Hall's legacy. May we always remember her for her goodness, her light. And God loved us all enough to show us that picture on the water so that we would too know the only truth that matters. Certainly a message a sister would want a sister to have. Thank you, sis, again. God's message is in the miracles. I hope you enjoy it.